you laughing at? Well, you just look... You look out of place with children. I'm earning me keep. Our Audrey's put us up for a few days, so it's a week of babysitting and lawn mowing. Who's up with thee? Hello. Hello, Bob. <laughs> Hello, Ward. All right. Yes, well enough, thanks. How's your mum and Selma? Fine, thanks. Hey, listen, uh, do you think it'd be all right if I took your au pair out for a Sunday morning drink? <laughs> <laughs> well, can I trust you, though? Because they're very hard to get. Yeah, she'll be back in time for a dinner. Hey, do you want to stay for Sunday lunch? You can if you like, because the kids are going to the grandma's. Are you sure? Sure you've got enough? Uh, roast lamb and mint sauce. Back at 1.30. Champion. Pubs won't be open yet. Sunday. Go for a drive. That's an idea. See how the old place looks these days. I'll tell you where we go. What's the name of that coffee bar we used to hang around? Uh, the Marimba, wasn't it? Where they're that sexy waitress with the green fingernails. Yeah, well, things have changed. Oh, aye. Pink now, are they? Changed more than that. Well, she was anyway. Uh, what time did uh, Audrey say dinner was? Half past one. <laughs> we don't want to be rushed, do we? <laughs> That was your marimba coffee bar. Eee, used to get them great raspberry cones with green specks on top. Green specks? You mean pistachio? No, nail varnish. <laughs> See that lot? That's all coming down in a couple of years. You know where we are now? Well, vaguely. I, I just can't place... Underneath this great pile of concrete is what used to be the Go-Go Rock Club. Members only, licensed till three, closed on Sundays. The North's premier music mecca. The Go-Go? Gone? <laughs> Gone. But not forgotten. You come here at three o'clock in the morning of a full moon, you might just catch a glimpse of a headless guitarist drifting through the empty parking lots to the strains of Roll Over Beethoven. This was Savile Street. Anita Tupper lived here, remember? No wonder they're pulling it down. <laughs> Do you remember when we used to come fishing here Sunday afternoons if we didn't have a fixture? Let's come after dinner. Get some rods and come back this afternoon. No fish. No fish? Pollution. Well, we've always had pollution. We invented pollution long before it was fashionable. Aye, but they pulled down the flour mill and built a chemical factory. There isn't a fish between here and the North Sea. What a disgrace. People have no regard for their environment. They pollute the rivers and blacken the air and build chemical factories and dump their refuse. It's a disgrace. <laughs> that was the market. That was Saturday morning pictures. Well, at least Eric still survived. Just. <laughs> I wonder this Pope's still here. I'm surprised they haven't put a demolition order on this. Pulled it down and built a new civic centre. No, the new civic centre on the site of the old Roxy. Not the Roxy ballroom. Prayed so. Hell's teeth is nothing sacred. Two pints of special, please, George. I'm sorry you had to find out like this, but I had to tell you sometime. The National Trust should have put a preservation order on that. It's terrible. All my memories are there. Part of my life, part of your life belonged to the Roxy Ballroom. Oh, well, I expect the National Trust needs better reasons than that. No, Roxy. I should think on full moons, you and I will haunt the new Civic Centre, twisting through the corridors. To the strains of Art Sibley and his singing sax. He died, you know, at Art Sibley. Did he? Poor heart. Heart and lungs. <laughs> Still, I suppose you can't blow a baritone sack six nights a week for 20 years and not do some damage. You'll be up there now in that great palais in the sky, welcoming old friends with a smile and a toot. And a chorus of Mr Sandman. Half a tone flat. Mind you, the old Roxy wouldn't have been the same without Art Sibley. Still a tragic loss, though. Yeah. It was the first dance hall I ever got into. Such memories, man. First place I ever learned to dance. First place I ever learned a bit of social poise and repartee. Yeah, I can remember your dance or repartee. Can I drive you home, pets? Oh, have you got a car? No, but I've got a bloody great whip. 
<laughs> well, that's from a film. I think Cary Grant said it to Audrey Hepburn. I'm sure he did. Well, it used to break the ice anyway, don't we? Hey, you know I once won the Roxy's Winner Holiday for Two Boss and Over contest. Oh, hi. Right. Where was the holiday? Well, technically, I suppose it should have been Brazil, home of the Boss and Over. But that budget couldn't stretch to that, so it was a week in Red Car. <laughs> Red Car's still there, is it? I think so. Nowhere else is you've shown me this morning. None of our memories are intact. Except the juvenile court. Yeah, today's made me realise just how many changes there has been. If you live here all the time, you don't notice it so much. Still, I suppose it's a good thing. Progress, expansion. Plenty of opportunities around here now, you know? You wouldn't think that if you went down the Labour Exchange. There's precious few opportunities on display down there. Unless you want to work for British Rail Parcels or hose down a brewery. You've uh, been to the Labour Exchange, have you? What? Oh, well, you've got to go, haven't you, uh, uh, for the insurance card. Oh, I see. I thought you might have been uh, looking for a job. No, 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 no. The insurance oh, card. You've yeah, got to, you fine. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to start thinking about a job sooner or later, you know. Well, there's no hurry. There's no hurry. I'm not short, you know. I'm not on the bread line. I've got my savings and my terminal leave pay. I'm not rushing into any old job. Got to think about it first. Have a look around. I'm not so sure I want to stay here. Especially now they pull down the Roxy. Not stay here. You like it here. You always said you feel funny anywhere else. You get on the train to King's Cross, you get the jitters at Doncaster. It was years ago, man, when I was just a... Uh, I didn't know any better. Thought I'd seen a bit of life. I don't know. This town may have a new civic centre, mate, but it doesn't disguise the fact that it's a dead end. Well, what could you do? Well, I don't know. I, I just have this feeling. Look... I was in the army with a bloke called Huey McLaren. Really good mates we were, and he'd never had any education or anything like that. He'd just been a baker in Berwick. And one day I said to him, one day I said, Huey, I said, what are you going to do when you get out? And do you know what he said to me? I'll never forget it. He said, anything I like. Not there's, well, nothing else I can do except bake bread in Berwick. Oh, no, 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 no. His attitude was, anything I like. Surprise move by Heath, ex Berwick Baker, to be Postmaster General. It's typical of your small town mentality. If you don't believe you can do something, you'll never amount to anything. When Huey got demobbed in Aden, he didn't get the plane back. He hitchhiked back. Hitchhiked from Aden. Now, a bloke like that could do anything. Fur trapping in Canada, drive to Kathmandu, row across the Atlantic. And I might just go with him. Your, your, your roots are here. If you recall, five years ago, I was uprooted from here. Uprooted and dumped in some drafty barracks thanks to someone not a million miles away. Without which you wouldn't have seen life. Without which you wouldn't have had the urge to row the Atlantic or drive to Kathmandu in the back of a baker's van. <laughs> one day. That's all I'm saying. One day. All right, one day. But in the meantime, maybe you should give yourself time to adjust. Get some behind you. You want something coming in? You're not going to earn a fortune mowing your Audrey's lawn and babysitting. If I want a job, a stopgap, there's no problem. I just go back to Ellison's. Old Darby always said to me, when you come out, Terry, your job ears open. I just go back to Ellison's. There is a problem. What? They pulled it down two years ago. <laughs> Does anyone want any more pudding? I'm sorry that roast lamb was done so well. I can't understand it. It must be that clock. I put it on at half past eleven to cook slowly. <coughs> Maybe it's the oven. Maybe it's the meat. I don't know why you wanted to change that butcher. I changed that butcher because they closed the old one down. Is there anything left standing in this town? One solitary pre-1967 brick standing on top of another? They say that by 1988 this will be one of the most exciting environments in the United Kingdom. In the meantime, where are you supposed to go to have a dance? Or catch an unpolluted fish or buy a decent piece of meat? It it wasn't the meat, it was that oven. They've got this plan to seal off all traffic between Sutton Street and Mason's Avenue. They've pulled down Ellison's, that's what they've done. To make way for the new underpass. So the ordinary working man doesn't come into it. It's all down to town planners and environments and landscapers. And people like me are just bulldozed aside in the name of progress. Ellison's went bankrupt long before the bulldozer moved in. I saw it coming, I got out before the crunch came. You were sensible, Bob. You did the right thing. You were very shrewd. And look how well you've been doing since. Where are you working now? Oh, um, uh, another company, another line. <laughs> well, what's the name of this company? What's Elmer's dad runs it? 
building and civil engineering. That's what he's doing now. Oh, I see. How shrewd of you to get out before the crunch came. No wonder your engagement to Thelma's back on again. Might lose a job as well as a wife. Look, Mr. Chambers does me no favours. I have to pull my weight. I have to prove myself as much as the next man. Aye, only the next man's not going to marry his daughter, though, is he? Perhaps Bob could get you something, Terry. I don't need any strings pulled for me. I don't need the old pals act. It's not what you're doing like, Terry. It's who you know. I can manage, thank you. One day. One day. One day what? One day he and Huey McLaren will be washed ashore on Whitley Bay Sands. The first men to have crossed the North Sea on a tea tray. <laughs> Who on earth's Huey McLaren? You haven't heard of Huey McLaren? The Huey McLaren? A legend in his own lifetime. He went all the way from Aden to Aldershot on a camel. <laughs> Huey taught me a lot. He taught me there's more to life than a salary and superannuation and an endowment policy when you're 55. Well, who on earth would want to go all the way from Aden to Aldershot on a camel? You're a qualified electrician, Terry. You'll have no trouble getting a job. I can ask around if you want. I don't want. I don't want any help from anybody. I've got a few ambitions and a few ideas and a few plans of my own. And getting a job round here doesn't fit into any of them. Come in. Oh, uh, excuse me, is, uh, is Mr. Busby around? Who wants him? Uh, well, the Labour Exchange sent me. You're, uh, looking for electricians, they said. I am. Uh, Mr. Busby. Mr. Busby's not here at the moment. Oh, I see. Well, they said to come down this morning. They said definitely this morning. Electricians, is it? Aye, Mr. Busby, they said this morning. He didn't say anything. <laughs> Mr. Busby, JCRV, electrical contractors. Oh, you've got the right place. It, it's just that he didn't say anything. <laughs> well, should I come back? Um, just a minute. Assistant will see you. Oh, right. In a moment. <laughs> oh. By the damn's not off playing this up this morning. What's wrong with your leg then? I'll never talk about it. <laughs> I've been overseas, you see. Oh. In a few years. Oh, there's been some changes round here, though, but I see they pull the Roxy down. The where? The Roxy. Roxy? The Roxy dance hall. Don't know it. You must have been away a long time. Yes, well, I have. Been all around the world. Seen lots of places, lots of people. Nothing like travel, you know, for broadening the mind, for... Making you realise what life has got to offer. What are you doing here, then? <laughs> You'll see you now. Thank you. Sit down, I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> Terry, what on earth? Oh, well, I was, I, I, I was just passing by. I was, I was just passing, so I thought I'd drop in and say hello. Hello. <laughs> hello, great. Do you want a cup of tea? Yes, gr great. That's, uh, that's what I thought. I thought I'd pop in and see Bob and have a cup of tea. <laughs> Hang on, Wendy. <coughs> oh, Wendy, um, could you rustle up a couple of teas and a biscuit for Mr. Collier? Yes, Bob. Uh, Mr. Ferris. I can't, um, I can't take too long. I've got some applicant out there for a job. Oh, really? Uh, a job? Yeah, Spark. Still, let him wait. <laughs> People like us can't be rushed, can we? I suppose not. <laughs> Sparks are to a penny. <laughs> I didn't know uh, J.C. Harvey belonged to your future dad-in-law. <laughs> yeah, subsidiary. There's four firms in the group. Do you normally uh, interview people, then? No, not normally, no. That's Frank's job. Frank Busby. Still, he's out on the site somewhere. <laughs> Makes a change. Drunk with power, eh? <laughs> <laughs> sit down, sit down. 
Terry, you know what we were talking about the other day? I mean, I, I know you fancied uh, a change, but, um, well, if you do feel that you need something, I could always... I mean, Frank Busby uh, No, always... thank you, Bob. No, thank you very, very much. But uh, there's nothing further from my mind. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I've reached a decision. I'm not staying. I thought you should be the first to know. Uh, I'm moving on. Moving on? Where? Where? What? Where? Where? Ah. <laughs> well, uh, that's not quite been finalised yet. I, I suppose the first thing to do will be uh, uh, contact you and McLaren and then uh, play it by ear. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? I've never been so sure. This is not just a snap decision, you know. When are you leaving? What? When? When? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, this week, I should think. I mean, definitely, there's no point in hanging about, is there? No, I suppose not. You missed my wedding. Yeah, I know, mate. Still, your in-laws won't be sorry about that. Well, I will. Well, I'll send you a telegram wherever I am. Be a bit pricey from Kathmandu. <laughs> I shouldn't think we'll have got that far by then. But uh, Kathmandu's on your itinerary? Possibly, possibly. It depends which route we take. Route to where? Well, that's not been finalised yet. <laughs> I don't know, Terry. You've just got back and now you're off again. I never knew there was so much gypsy in your soul. Well, it's just something in the blood, I suppose. I mean, the last five years have given me a taste for excitement, adventure, a taste for the unknown, a... Hint of mystery and danger. That's why I've got to go and join Huey. Well, where is he? Berwick on Tweed. <laughs> Dear me, I thought at least he was a mercenary up the Congo. There's not much danger and mystery about Berwick on Tweed, is there? You can go there on a day trip. That's just his home, you fool. That's where we'll meet and plan things and buy maps and stores and such like. And then you'll set off, up through uncharted waters. In search of the source of the tweed. It's that sort of attitude <laughs> that is driving me away. I'm sorry, kid. I don't want you to go away. I don't want you to go away at all. My mind's made up. Well, if it is, fine, fine. All I can say is good luck. And God bless. Oh, cheers, mate. Cheers. Congratulations. What for? If you're having a cup of tea and shaking hands, you must have got the job. <laughs> Sheer loss of face. It's his pride that's been hurt. Ah, oh, well, I don't think he really wanted to go in the first place. Of course he did. Loss of face. Look, he was just getting used to being back and he's seen how things have changed. I mean, he's seen how well you're doing, Bob, and all his other friends. He feels left behind. I mean, all he's got to show for his years in the army is a broken marriage and a few post office savings. And a tattoo on his left buttock. <laughs> Has he? <laughs> so that's why he always locks the bathroom door. A, a, t a tattoo of what? Oh, it'll be something crude, like a snake wrapped round a topless woman. No, I caught a glimpse of it once down the public bus. It was more dignified than that. It was more like a, a royal coat of arms or a crest, you know, with something underneath. Oh, maybe it's his regimental badge. Stupid thing to do anyway. Still, if he has disappeared, at least we've got a distinguishing mark to give to Stuart Henry. Come home, Terry Collier. Nancy Ridley forgives you. He hasn't disappeared anyway. I've had a letter from him. A letter? Mm. It's only to remind us we owe him four pounds lawn mowing charges. Where's it from, Berwick? There's an address there. You know, all the time he was in the army, he never wrote to us. He sent us that postcard from Cyprus. Yes, but that was only to remind us he had a birthday coming. He didn't say much, does he? I mean, there's no... Hint of meeting that Huey or any mention of any plans or anything. Well, if you ask me, he only wrote to let us know where he was so we'd write back and beg him to come home. Perhaps I should drive up there and talk to him. I mean, it's, it's up to me, isn't it? I could drive up there and talk to him and maybe fetch him back. The sooner the better. You think so? Aye, well, we haven't got a babysitter for Friday night. <laughs>
Yes? Oh, is there Mr. Collier here? And Mr. Terry Collier? Aye, there is, but he's not in just now. Oh, could you tell me what time he'll be back? Hi, tease at six o'clock. He'll no miss that. Thanks. You're welcome. I think what you're doing is great. What? I really envy you. Don't patronise me, Ferris. Envy me what? Soaking wet feet and chapped hands. We don't wash them cars in fairy liquid, you know. <laughs> I do envy you. Everything you're doing is so together. It's the way to be these days, isn't it? You're, you're easy riding. It's taking off. It's getting straight. Moving on. What do you mean? All I'm doing is ringing out. <laughs> Elvis Presley worked in a car wash. Yeah. Well, in song, anyway. It's this whole idea of freedom, like American youth today. They don't want possessions, a home and a job. They want to be on the road, trucking down to New Mexico. By the time I get to Phoenix, it's only 24 hours to Tulsa. That sort of thing. All you need is a sleeping bag and a harmonica. I don't play the harmonica. <laughs> you play a fair tune on your cousin Martin's accordion. Well, there's hardly room for an accordion and me and a sleeping bag. Don't get bogged down by trivia. I'm talking about broader things. You can maybe live in a commune. Oh, Bob, who are you kidding? I'm not in New Mexico. I'm in Berwickshire, and it's half-day closing, and the weather forecast says drizzle. It might be all right in America, but it's different here. It's different when you say, by the time I get to Peebles, I'm only, I'm only 24 hours from Falkirk. <laughs> It's a state of mind. Look, Bob, I don't wish to shatter your romantic illusions, but I am not the sort of bloke to give up my worldly goods and go traipsing round in a sleeping bag, not shaving. For a start, I haven't got any worldly goods to give up. And I hate camping. I'm not working in a car wash as a tribute to Elvis Presley. I'm working there to pay the rent for me sweaty boarding house. It's worth it, isn't it? You made the gesture. You made me think twice about getting suffocated. You? Yes. Do you think my life is so exciting? You think decorating and planting a hedge and saving up every penny and staying up all hours with a dreary correspondence course, do you think that's living? I've always yearned to see places I've only read about in the colour supplements. Long to meet girls that I've only seen in Hawaii 5 -0. I thought you were all settled in your mind. Yes, I was. And then you come back after five exciting years in foreign parts. Well, it weren't all that exciting, mate. Some of them were spending devices. It was different. <laughs> Look, Bob, the army's hardly Hawaii 5 0. But you did it. You made the break. And perhaps it's time I did. What did Huey McLaren say, eh? What did Huey say? Anything you like, you can do. We can do. I could cash in my savings, sell the car. And what about Thelma? I can just see you and her up the Orinoco in a sleeping bag with 2.4 children. <laughs> Thelma's got to realise a man has to do what a man has to do. Yeah, well, I know what I have to do. What? Get you back where you belong. How much owe you, Huey? Hang on a minute, Terry. Cheers, mate. Huey? <laughs> not... Not the Huey. Right. Not the Huey McLaren. In person. <laughs> What's he doing here? This is where I found him. He married his childhood sweetheart and they live in a caravan. He's got a 95% mortgage on this place, and if he works 16 hours a day for the next 33 years, he might have paid off the tea urn. <laughs> Do you fancy coming round later, Terry? Maureen's making some toad in the hole, and uh, maybe we could have a wee game of Monopoly later. <laughs> it's very, very tempting, Huey. But we're moving on. Oh, nothing on the box, Terry? Oh, later on. Uh, there's plenty of beer in the fridge. You haven't... Uh... 
Haven't seen a cufflink anywhere, have you? No, mate, no. She said the supper's in the oven. Ah, right, fine. Are you OK now? Yes, thanks, Ernie. Oh, it's nice to sit in a comfy chair in a warm house. We were so worried when you went off like that, Terry. Were you, mate? Ah, well, we wouldn't have had a sitter for tonight, would we? <laughs> now, I've checked the kids are asleep, but if Wayne does wake up, be firm. Don't bribe him with half a pound of chocolates like you did the last time. I can manage. Oh, that'll be Bob. Let him in, will you, love? Now, all you've got to do is, when the tinger goes, take the tin foil off and brown it for five minutes, all right? Thank you, Flower. Hello, Audrey. Hey, kid, you look smashing. Oh, I wish I felt it. I'm in such a rush. Mm. Hello, kid. I brought you half a bottle of vodka. Mm, you're all being very nice to me tonight. Hello, pleased to see you again, back in the bosom of your family. Oh, I've got a couple of glasses. Hey, Terry, about that job. I've had a work with Mr Busby and it's still open, you know. He needs a good electrician. I told him you were the best. Are you listening? It's only union rates, you know, but there's bags of overtime, you're qualified for holidays. Pop round and see him tomorrow. Uh, you uh, never give up, do you? Pardon? Worrying about my welfare? Making assumptions? No, what have I said? All right, so I'm back home. But that doesn't alter my thinking on certain fundamental principles. You don't think I spent the last five years of sweat and toil in every far-flung corner of this globe just to come back here and work for some tin pot builder as a sparks, do you? With you prancing about the site, flaunting your newfound status in your slide rule? You ungrateful pig. I... <laughs> I put my reputation on the line recommending you for that job, knowing how you might screw things up for me and embarrass me. Well, never again, mate. Never again will I raise a finger. Never again will I rescue you from the obscurity of a Scottish car wash. I wash my hands of you. Spend all your life babysitting, if that's what you want, or join the dog queue. I don't care! He left his vodka. <laughs> well, ever since I've known him, I've never seen Bob like that. I've never seen him so worked up. Why was he that angry? Because he loves me. <laughs>